So yes. good morning, everyone, and welcome <laughs> to episode 34 of The Art as Well. My guest this morning is Elizabeth Cope. Uh, she was born in Kildare in 1952 and now lives in Kilkenny, married to Geoffrey, uh, with whom she has three children. Elizabeth has toured and exhibited in many parts of the world and is known for her very large scale works. Um, her work has often been likened to Matisse uh, as she paints with glorious abandonment using vibrant colours. And having seen a good selection of her work, thanks to this magnificent book, um, which I hope you can see here, uh, this is called Seduced by the Smell of Paint. Um, and she'll t and no doubt tell, her, tell the story about that. Um, but it is a magnificent publication. Uh, it's got about 200 colour plates um, of her work from the years. Absolutely gorgeous. And um, there are forwards and essays and interviews with the likes of H Hilary Guise, uh, Niall McMonagall, Sarah Gibson and Claire Henry. Um, so the, the one thing I did notice about, about her work is that it seems to engender a response in the viewer. Um, whether you like it or not, it, it, it's got this power that, that makes you take a decision on, on, on the painting. And I find that quite unique. Um, however, my job isn't to be an art critic here, uh, but rather as a fellow artist wondering how on earth this powerhouse of a woman is driven. Um, and maybe her early life uh, affected her or molded her career. And I certainly think that from my initial chat with her, um, that her early life gave her a sort of a work ethic, uh, which I think um, is, 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 is the envy of, of many artists. So we also want to find out, you know, what has inspired her work and so on. Um, so let's go straight to Kilkenny and say hello to Elizabeth Cope. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. And you're there with your husband? With Jeffrey, yes. Excellent. Hi, hello, Jeffrey. Alan. How are you? I won't be here very long. Right. I see you're taking your bonnet off. <laughs> I have taken my bonnet off. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is the sound good? The sound, I find the sound not so good, Alan. Yeah, but I think it's improved. It could be my, 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 yeah. it's probably my, at my end. Yeah, no, I, I probably think, a wadge of paint stuck in it. There could be that, it could be that. No, I think, I think, um, I'm, Trina's just saying that Elizabeth's sound is perfect, so you're okay. That's good. That's as, good. as long as you stay in front of the camera, or, yes. or you think you're, you're, you're fine. All That's right? a good idea, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Not at all, my pleasure. I'm very honoured. And, and thank you for all the work you, you've done during this week to, to get it all together, both of it's you. A, it's a real pleasure. Yeah, good. So look, let's, let's make a start on that, because I know you, you were born in, in Kildare, and um, maybe if you tell us a little bit about your, your childhood there. Well, I, I was very lucky. I had a very, well, I, I know it's a bit trite to say a happy childhood. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the old sad story, but... We were very lucky because we lived in a village and my father was a dairy farmer and yeah. my mother had a grocery store and we sold our own milk and our own vegetables. Mm -hmm. So it was people are now starting up that again. So, yeah. you know, 50, 60 years later. And we my mother, we used to have hundreds of children playing in our yard. We had a very large yard. And my mother was a kindergarten teacher without knowing it and without getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And so every summer and we would put on plays, you know, mm -hmm. we had a very rich childhood. So, yes. um, but- and, um, and, you, and you did a lot of work around the, 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 the farm and the so farm. on. Yes, yes, yeah. indeed. My father, when he was 20, was invited to play for Manchester United. Oh. That's my only claim to fame. <laughs> and he was a goalie, left-footed. He played GAA for Kildare. Yeah. And Ruben is left footed as well. So it's extraordinary, this, um, you know, talent yeah. of football and, you know, but he, his mother wouldn't let him go because mm. in those days it was amateur sport. And my father always believed in amateur sport. Yes. yes. You know, now it's completely over the yeah. top. Indeed, indeed. So, so but you, you moved to, to London then, didn't you? Quite young. Well, um, I, I didn't go to London until I was 19. Well, that's well enough. Yes, and yeah. um, so um, I worked for three years before I went to art school full time. I went mm -hmm. to the uh, Sir John Cass School of Art in the evening mm -hmm. and I got a job working in an advertising agency in Piccadilly. And um, then for the next two years, I worked uh, um, as a teacher in a prep school for boys in Kensington. Mm -hmm. And it was the happiest time of my life called St. Philip's. It's still there. It's a day prep school for boys. Yeah. And um, then I asked the headmaster after the first year if I could 
maybe give up teaching sport so that I could devote more time to painting. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, we can't let you go. So he allowed me to do that. So, so yeah. I was very lucky in every way. And how many years were you teaching there? I was there for two years oh, in two a years. Prep school. And then I went full time to the Chelsea School of Art mm -hmm. after that. Very good. And when did you come back to Ireland? In 1977. Mm -hmm. But I, I was working part time. I had all these part time jobs, you know, yes. um, including drawing people in St. James's Park uh, on a Sunday, you know, doing their portraits really? yeah. and um, selling ice cream in uh, near the Serpentine uh, restaurant in Hyde Park, you know, yes. all yes. those kind of things. So the real entrepreneur. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when did you meet Geoffrey? Because you, you met Geoffrey back, back in, in Ireland, did you? Yes. I, when I came back to Ireland, I decided yeah. I needed to earn a bit of money. So I was teaching part time in um, in the Boris Vocational School in Carlo and then in the Vocational School itself in Carlo. And who came into the class as a, a student but Geoffrey? Then I went home that evening and I said to my sister, there was a lovely little fellow in the class that said he would seat you down to the ground. <laughs> so there you go. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah. You know he's still there. He's there in the background. I can still see here. Him. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're a lucky man, Jeffrey. That's all I can say. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I'm uh, not sure about that. Yeah, yeah. So listen, but you, you then embarked on on um, a, a number of residencies right around the world, where, where you, you 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 produced your art and exhibited. Tell us a bit about that. Well, I suppose the residencies I, I just did because, you know, one needs to always get a break from living mm. in the same place. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you take yourself with you wherever you go, yeah. you know. Elizabeth, can you just focus into you a little bit more? Well, I move into yeah, you. Just, yeah, just a tiny bit. Well, yes. Not into me, but just there, yeah, yes. to your centre. Can you hear me now? Perfect, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I had some interesting ones. One, The one in uh, Oslo I enjoyed very much. Mm. I enjoyed Kilreelig in Ireland and um, I went to one in New York, in um, Brooklyn. And then I went to one in Sao Paulo, which was very good as well. Yes. One in Oslo was excellent. Um, I went, I stayed at Edward Monk's studio for two months. Did you really? And I went to one in Iran more recently. Yes. Um, I went to Iran when I was 20 in 1972. Mm -hmm. And so I went back with Jeffrey two years ago yeah. And we we um, had a wonderful time there painting and so you, you, you can't you can't stay, stay still can you? you you really are always on the move well I have stood still this year because yesterday you a year to. ago <laughs> it was a year since I was in London yeah in the in the studio in the London city island so yes. but it takes guts to stay at home in your own country uh, uh, to work I think it takes just as mm. much, much guts to stay there than to travel. Yeah, but but you're you're very you're very um, you know you keep yourself extremely busy all the time. Don't well, you? I suppose it's like being a rat with teeth. You have to keep keep them. You know, oh, you, you right. have to keep going. It's a form of madness. It's not a normal thing being a painter. Is it you not? Know? No. no, I don't think it is. <laughs> it's too it's too much. You know. Mm, yeah, I, I did hear somewhere that that the, the 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 day after you produced one of your children. Sorry. The day after you produced one of your children, yes. but you, you, you went you went off into your studio with your brushes and couldn't be stopped. <laughs> well, I think um, I think the day after the birth of uh, one yeah. of the children, I was painting. But usually, I'd have the child on my lap when I'm painting. Really, would you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, only the practical things come first. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so look, we, we've got a lot to cover. Why, why don't we start with, with a little tour of your studio and, and just yes. explain where you are, because you're, you're, yes. you're, you're not at home and such. No, well, I'm in a big stone barn, which mm. is freezing. I have three forms yeah. of heating on at the moment. Have you? And um, I'm not a comfortable studio painter. I prefer mm. to be out and about, hanging out at the back of a truck, painting or on the streets I feel quite at home painting anywhere you know yeah so a uh, painting in the studio um it's um it, it, it's it, usually studios are too dark I like light coming in from everywhere yes so shall I start now please do yeah. yeah yeah okay I'm going to unplug the machine thank you okay um I'm just going to um I'll start with what I'm doing at the moment, shall I? Do, please. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, they're not finished. I've only started them, and it's quite a grim subject matter. It's about the tomb baby murders, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And 
um, I've christened one of them called Getting Away With Murder. Mm -hmm. So um, um, it's quite grim, you know. Okay. But anyway, I think uh, we do have to really get to the bottom of it with the Catholic Church. So yes, absolutely. anyway, yeah. I just wanted to show you, um, can you see this one? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, it's literally very undercooked, as you can see. And it's a kind of a collage cut out. Mm -hmm. And then its counterpart is over here. No, sorry. Yeah, I can see that perfectly. Um, the color I'm not happy with, but. And the next painting I've been doing um, a couple of weeks back, it's all about birds. It's a, quite a large painting. It's about, I think it's seven by eight. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then this one here was done a year ago in London, uh, on London City Island in Airbyte Studios. And the girl who's posing for me is called Claudelle, and she was the director of the studios. So here she is here. Can you see it? She's, she's, she's um, petting a reindeer. And of course, you see all the COVID little things coming in. Yes. I was quite frightened for the last 10 days in London because it, you knew this thing was going to be big, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next large painting I did at Edward Monk Studio is quite big. It goes on forever. Wow, that's huge. What is that, about eight feet? Oh, it's more. It's about eight feet high and about 12 feet wide or 14 feet. Oh, right, okay. And that's, that's one of a, a diptych. And t tell me about the, the, um, the, the in, in, a, in a lot of your work, a lobster appears. In fact, yes. both of those right beside each other. Yeah. Well, I have the lobster with me. Do you remember the, yeah. fi the singing fish craze some years ago? Yes. And one was a lobster. I mean, they were all kind of, you press a button and the, the bass would sing. But I came home from somewhere and Sybil said to me, Mother, I have a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. And if you can see this lobster here, see it? Yes. yes. He's made of rubber. Uh -huh. And because rubber is a natural material, I felt inspired by it. So mm -hmm. she, she, he was on a bed of lettuce leaves, and then he started to sing a country and western song. Mm -hmm. So the lobster is, this is what has encouraged me to paint the lobster. Okay. And so th that's a and does, he, does, he, does he still sing? No, his batteries, I could maybe, I'll try putting in new batteries, maybe. Oh, yeah, not now, though. <laughs> no, no, not now, no. And then I want to show you another, um, this is another painting I did, a Fanny oh. Tit and Bum painting. Mm -hmm. This is my menopausal series. I can't hear you there. This is from my menopausal series. Yes. Or my Fanny Tit and Bum series. Mm -hmm. And was, was, that, was that part of the Naked Truth uh, exhibition? No, no, not that one. There were a couple of Fanny Tit and Bum ones in it all right, but yeah. not that one. And this is the first one I've done of that series. This was painted outside. Uh, I, I, I will just show it to you now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I mean, there's obviously a lot of symbolism there. C can you just briefly explain there's what's 23. going through your mind? Hmm? Well, this lady has 23 cheats. Okay, and is that significant, 23? Well, probably, <laughs> but I think it's because women, we, we have um, so many wonderful gifts and um, we're giving, it's giving as part of our nature, you know. Yes. And um, so I suppose all these cheats are there for generous reasons, I suppose, you know. And when, um, when you talk about just, you know, because I'm sure people are going to be asking the question, when you say a menopausal series, what, what, what was it that, inspired you to do that? Was it a sort of a liberation thing? I'm not really sure. I suppose um, I like to see, the thing is, th th which makes me very unfashionable, I paint every subject matter yeah. because to me, the subject is the paint itself. Mm -hmm. So I really don't care what I paint, quite frankly. Although I must admit, I love skin and flesh. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know why it came about, probably because I was menopausal, you know? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and um, every life is good. I mean, I'm going to be 70 next year. 
And, you know, I like being old, although my body is creaking a bit, but I'm only now beginning to grow up since I've met yeah. you, of course. You oh, know, and I, no, no, but maturity comes very slowly to painters. But speaking yeah. for myself anyway. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, well, that, that's good because you, you you seem to be very comfortable in your skin and, and well, I'm you, happy. Yes, you have I'm a very, very jovial glad. sort of attitude. Yes, and I f see young people stressed now, and mm. um, I, I feel it's um, I, the maturity comes very very late. You know, I'm yes. just plugging you in again in case yeah. I lose power. No, good idea. Good idea. Now, shall I show you another couple of paintings of Do. other people's work? Um, um, because I I've collected or we we've collected. Are you there? We've collected. Yeah other people's works. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I'll get the nepotism out of the way, shall I? Do I'm just that. going to show you my children's work. Um, uh, th this one here is a piece of sculpture. Uh, by Can you see? Yeah. Wait, no. oh, left a little know? bit, yeah. No, it's, it's a big wooden piece. See it? Yes. yes, I see it now. And Ruben is like myself. He's a bit of a clown. Oh, there, there's Alfie outside. I know I have to show him last. You want to have yeah. a quick look at Alfie? Alfie is one of one of five, is he? Alfie, yes, yes, he's the uh, stallion. But yeah. we have to keep him away from the girls because they're now in season, and mm. we, we we have to try and not have any more donkeys, you know. Because oh, I know I know you tried to round them up. Well, yes, we did, but the we're too far away. Yeah, and, uh, but at least we've got Alfie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to show we're going to show a little clip. Which you can explain later on. Oh when yes, yes, indeed. When we're no, finishing the tour, yeah. Yes, I'm just going to show you briefly some paintings that I have mm -hmm. of other artists. So I'm starting at the top. And the sculptures, the sculptures as well. Yes. So those sculptures are are Phoebe's, your daughter, yeah. Some of them are yes, and some okay. are other artists. Uh, even this is a painting um, here by Sybil when she was five which is such a delightful little painting yeah i mean that just cheers me up you know that's and lovely the, everybody has genius there's no question about that isn't that like we all have flashes yeah and then there's another one by jeremy her husband which is um he's, got, he's very witty jeremy makes um yeah. cards for example this with cardboard um can you see this I can, yes, yes. Uh, like theater lights. Oh, yes, yes, I see now, yeah. It's so clever. Yeah, very clever. And um, um, there's a, a, even a, a little watercolor by Jeffrey's auntie, Violet. Violet Cope. Mm -hmm. It's a the bottom. watercolor. Yeah, but now yeah. I can't get it right. to work very well. Yeah, and turn it to the right there. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then we have a young artist staying at the moment in a residency, which we have. And mm -hmm. his name is Sean Grimes. And he's a talented young artist. He's uh, this is one of his paintings, and he's also a musician. Yes. And he's very clever. Yeah, and I'm losing you there a little bit. Yes. Yeah. It's been um, a great help. It's, yeah. it's great to have and, young artists coming uh, coming around. For, forgive me if I if you've already mentioned this, but is is that there's one of Phoebe there who's pregnant? Is that oh Phoebe? yes, yes. This is a very lovely one of by Phoebe. Yeah, it is a lovely one. Yes. This yeah. 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 That's lovely. lovely. Yeah. That's the lovely. The light is it's very strong. And then um I have um, uh, I can't remember. Um there's one here of um my uh myself last year I painted in London. Mm -hmm. And then there's one of my father which I did many years ago. Uh Yes, I can see that, yeah. And then there's one I did when I was 19. I think it's over here, yes. Mm -hmm. You're down a little bit? Yeah. You're very good, yes, yes. Yeah. And then at the moment I'm painting um, Basi Kivni, who's an epidemiologist, and mm -hmm. he, he is right in, and he has written two books at the moment, one about about the epidemic yeah, and one about uh, surfing. And, and he, wor he works for the World, World Health Organization. Yes, he, he does. Yes, yeah. yes. Bassi, I call Bassi 007. He's a sweet guy. <laughs> He's related to Jeremy, Sybil's husband. And then this is a painting of a farmer called mm -hmm. John Dallin, whom I painted many, many years ago. Yes, very good. Uh, yeah. 
Um, and tell me, do you, do you paint in oils or acrylics or watercolor or what? I paint in oil and um, I have a few, I, I, I feel um, there's nothing like oil paint. There's nothing to compare. Sorry, can I just I'm not going to run it? down acrylic, but I won't say anything good about no. it. Can I, can I just stop you there for a second? Because I've, yes. noticed, I've noticed two bodies hanging from the rafters. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let me see. Right up. Yeah. Yes. I mean, how could you miss them? You know? <laughs> but there you are. That's, um, they were exhibited, actually, in the Solomon Gallery years ago. There's, they're a triptych. There is a third one. All right. And they were, they, I did that of Reuben when he was very young. You know when boys grow up overnight? Mm -hmm. You know, one minute they're four foot six and the next minute they're six foot four. <laughs> and Reuben had been away in school and I came, he came back and he'd just gone into a big, long streak of a human being. And um, yes. so that's, what, that's what inspired me. Very good. Lovely. And I, I see a lar very large lobster. Oh, the lobster is there, there as yes. well. He yeah. is there. He's the lobster. It always makes yes. an appearance. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Sorry, you were saying there about oil. So you're, you're a real oil aficionado rather than... Yes, absolutely. Oil is nothing like it, really. And but doesn't this go back to when your, your sister or something brought you back some oil? Yes, things? my sister Phil came home from France, having been an au pair for a year, mm -hmm. and gave me a box of oil paints. And that was the beginning of the end. It was the oh, smell. Well, yeah, and uh, hence, I think, the title of your book. Yeah, I'm really glue, I'm, I must be a glue sniffer, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. would, would you like to see Alfie now? He's posing for you. Yeah, yeah, do. Yes, bring I know it's kind of not exactly the end of the show yet, but it's oh, just God, no, no, because I want to show this. Yeah, you, you show, show me Alfie and then, then we'll, we'll do the video. Ah, look. Oh, he's cute. And you see, he was very cute because he went into the hen house. It was raining. Yeah. It was a, there was a very heavy shower. Yes. And you see, donkeys don't like the rain too much. They like Do to they be not? in out of it. Yeah. Okay. And and um, I, I I mentioned this to you before. They're not rescue donkeys. These, no, these not are at all. No, 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 not at all. And you see, I had hens and geese out here last year, but then the pine martin came and chopped their heads off. Oh no. So I'm going to get more, but I have to make a very good pen. You know. Very secure. Yeah. Because I, I even will have to put an electric fence. Quite savage, the Pine Martins. You know, they, I believe so. I believe yeah, so. They, they really are. Um, but it's good to see them because apparently they keep the grey squirrels at bay. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. Now, while, while I do try and grapple with the technology, would you give us an intro to um, the video that I'm going to show? It's, on, it's a YouTube video. Yes. And it was made by your son, Ruben. Many years ago, yes. And I think Phoebe helped as well in the production of it. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about it first. Yeah, please do. Um, it's, um, Phoebe was here at home at the time, and um, Ruben always makes his art pieces at the last minute. You know, I like mm. everything to be organized. But anyway, um, they decided they'd um, make a donkey exhibition as if the donkeys were going to an exhibition in Manhattan. So they yeah. paint the skyline of Manhattan with white paint, house paint on all these big round bales of silage. Mm -hmm. And it's all self-explanatory. Reuben is acting in it. So he suddenly realized he had no actor. And um, so uh, he had to be, so it's set in my studio here where the donkeys yep. come in and the donkey goes up to look at the image, you know, the painting. Yes. And, yep. but you have to see it twice to really get the fun of it. I think you're absolutely right. But it's um, under two minutes, so it's not too long. No, okay, well, let, let's have, have, have a look at it now.
the, the, the yeah, music so, does make it. It, 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 it really does because it's, yes. su, it's such a kind of a cocktail party, yes, you know, big opening um, yes. uh, 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 in the we, exhibition. We should, have, we should have had a few beers for the donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love the way one of them looks up. Yes. And, and you know, in, in a sense, they're so like people because their ears are going back and yes. forth to try and pick yes. up conversations yes. uh, on the side, you know. But they're, they're amazing animals because if you walk into the field, yeah. You cannot pass by them without saying hello to them. They demand that you wreck them. Do they really? They're very, they're very sociable creatures. Yes, yes. Um, so listen, just for those of you who'd like to watch it again, and I mean, it does, the second time round, it's actually very, very amusing. Um, and, and you do get the, the, the sound as well, which is uh, worthwhile. Um, it's called Aspiration, A-S-S, -S, two S's, otherwise just Aspiration, um, singular, okay? And if you look that up on YouTube, it'll come up first. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much, Alan. Yeah. Thank Not you. Not at all. I think that was lovely. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's, um, you know, let, let me ask you a couple of questions now. Um, the, the, what, what, you know, who would you say is your main inspiration or has been your main inspiration? Is there, is there a person or an artist that has sort of really given you the, the drive to, to do what you do? Well, I suppose it's very, it's so long ago now since I started painting. It's over 50 years ago. Mm. So basically, when Phil gave me the box of paints, he also gave me a, a little slimline version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in, in it, there was an image of Christ on the cross by Rembrandt. So that was the first image. You know, yes. I was nine years old. And that, I suppose, um, was the very first image I remember. But... There's so many influences along the way, you know, um, sure. I'm influenced by so many things, you know, like a child. I, I, I and I go to all kinds of galleries and museums. Well, I used to up to last mm. year and yeah. even the most um, I love going into little old smelly museums that haven't been touched. And I yeah. find it sad when modern curators come in and renovate all these lovely museums. They should be kept intact as they are mm. and not modernized because now you have an acre of space between each exhibit and there's so many words written up in museums and people mm. don't want words. We just want the image. Sure. You know, the item. Yes, yes. Mind you, I suppose the fact that they have a lot of space is probably a good thing in today, today's scenario. Yes, but yes, you know? but... Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. OK. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at um, some slides of your work. Yes. Okay? And uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll open it up to the floor uh, yes. as a Q&A after that. So Did I'm just you, going to pull up the slideshow. Yeah. Um, you want me to talk about each one or not? Please. Yeah, please just do. Briefly. Please I do. forgot to give you the sizes, but they're quite big mostly. Ah, you, can give us, you can give us a rough idea when okay. we're looking at them. OK. All right. You, you uh, tell me when. I will. I will. Right. Uh, this is Bella, a friend of ours, uh, and she's sitting in the studio in London City Island, and uh, there are polar bears there, and it's a painting I kind of cut up and made into another painting. So, um, and is that large? Global warming. I, yes. It, well, it's 150 centimeters high by 175 centimeters wide. That I remember. Yeah. And it's oil on canvas. And you, you, do you love working on, on uh, large scale work? I, I feel comfortable, yes. It doesn't mm. bother me. It doesn't bother me. Okay. And this is a very old one. This is a funny little painting. Mm. Uh, that's Domaine des Anges, which is a vineyard we used to go to. We stayed there for a few six months with the children. Yes. Um, and um, I don't know how it came about mixing a summer landscape with a snowman, but the children made the snowman. So. You know, I start really from something physical. So it's a kind of a mixture of the south of France and a, a, a snowy day in Ireland. Yes. So it was probably done in the, in the early 90s. Okay. Yeah. 97. Um, Jeffrey is my... Yeah, and this, this is done maybe a bit earlier. This is a rabbit in the snow in front of the house at Shank Hill with the children's slide. Mm -hmm. And um, the children were obviously making it with me because the chair is there where they had to stand up to finish off the rabbit. That's great. So, um, and of course, when it's snowy, that, that was painted in the snow. So yes. you don't get the feeling of snow until you're in it. You know, even when I was in Edward Munch's studio in 10 years ago, I went out into the snow because that's why I went there, because snow reflects light. 
uh, as much as, you know, you have to work fast. Mm, absolutely. That's yeah. a landscape yeah. going down the right hand side of it. So it's just, it, and I just left it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, this is a very old one. This was done around eight, 86 or so. Mm -hmm. Ruben, Phoebe and Ruben is sitting in front of a kind of a corner cupboard dresser mm -hmm. in the studio at Nocknagi before we came here. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. So it's quite old. It's oil on board. It's about four, four foot by three. Mm -hmm. And this is one I did in Brazil in 2000, 2015. And it's a do the, their little dog called Lucky. And that's a Bahian um, figurine. It's made out of clay. There are nine or ten heads. And it's uh, it's unique to that part of Brazil, I think. And what what, what is the symbolizing? I'm not really sure. I, yeah. I, I should really I should really know more about it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was there in their house, and I asked them if I could use it as a, oh, a still right. life. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was where I used to wash my clothes there, uh, downstairs. And um, and how long were you there? I was there two and a half months. All right. Yeah. And they were very nice people. And this is um, the um, Sandy Mount. Um, mm -hmm. Rings and End. I, yeah, Rings End. I think it's quite a big painting. It's on the stairs, isn't it? The attic, if it has a little frame around it. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, it's, 20, it's 30 inches by 24. It's oil on board. Yeah. And I've always loved painting, you see, because the color red and white and going up into the sky. It, mm -hmm. I do love um, the Pigeon House. It's, it's, it, it always inspired me. They were, they were talking recently about what to do with them because they, they either need to be repaired because they're getting a bit oh, fragile. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, else, I'm sure. Or else demolished. And, uh, Are they not being used anymore? No, 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 no. I don't think so, no. no. Can they not use them at the base for big kind of um, barbecues for people? <laughs> they probably could, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, in, in Carlo, uh, they pulled down the beet factory and they left one thing. I think it's a pity to pull them down. Jeez, this is a piece, be, yeah. Yes, this is a piece of, of by Phoebe, a sculpture of a sandstone, piece of sandstone of a of a girl. Yes, I think it's rather beautiful, and um, that's by Phoebe. Phoebe, funnily enough, usually sculptors tend to work only in stone, or they do um, clay modeling. Phoebe does both, mm. and that's a rare quality as well as paint. You know, and because I love sculptors as a breed of people because they're more down to earth. You know. Yeah. Um, Dick Joint was a very good friend of ours. He's dead now, but um, you know they're they're very reasonable people. I find sculptors. Yeah. Uh, but Dick was a stone carver. This is a plaster one by Phoebe when she was very young. Yes. Um, of a head and shoulders. And is Phoebe full time artist now? Yes. Yes. Phoebe lives in Scotland with Mungo yeah. Macash, her husband. They have two children. Yes. And um, they they he, he's a very good printmaker as well, Mungo. This, the Glasgow School of Art, they're great printmakers in Glasgow, uh -huh. you know, as well as being good colorists, you know. And wh while we're signaling her out, is, is Ruben also a full time artist? Well, well, well Ruben is farming now, but yeah. Ruben is, is an artist by nature. He, he went yeah. to art school in London mm -hmm. and he, 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 he is a really good artist, Ruben. But he because I'm an artist, like he always downplays it, you know, uh -huh. but um, well, I, I've, heard, I've heard he's he's extremely good. Well, he's he's uh, he likes a lot of humor and wit, yeah. but he always kind of it's typical, you know. It's like the mothers, you know. My son, my son, the engineer is drowning, you know. Yeah, no right. child yes. wants to be the same as his mother, you know. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, <laughs> and what about Sybil? Does she get involved well, in art? Well, Sybil, Sybil did archaeology, and she's married to Jeremy. And Sybil, of course, is if we have any problems in the family, who do we turn to? Sybil. She's the youngest. Oh. Even Phoebe and Reuben would. Uh, Sybil seems to have the right answers, you know. Yes, yes. Very and good. so yeah. she kind of, um, we, we always go to Sybil for um, any kind of support and advice. Interesting, yeah. yeah. There's one in every family. And this is by Mungo, Phoebe's husband. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the kitchen sink with the baby's um, little place mat, you know. For That's his. lovely. It's really and nice. And it's rather yeah. nice. It's very intense. Very, yeah. Yeah, it's very intense. And this is... Um, a sculpture by Phoebe in bronze. I, I hadn't seen this before. This must be quite recent. Okay. And that's a family um, piece that she was working on. This is Phoebe's as well. Yeah, Phoebe and Phoebe and Mungo. They they had they had a very unfortunate time. Their house burned to the ground some years ago. Really? 
Yes, and uh, luckily uh, it happened on uh, New Year's Eve. They went yeah. out to a party at eight mm -hmm. in the evening and the house was gone by 11. Oh, no. But, uh, Mungo, all he was standing up in was his kilt. You know, Hogmanay is a big event in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, luckily, the good news is they're back living in the house now since the last year and they have made it exactly as it was. It's a lovely little Queen Anne house. Yes. But... Um, it, it was extraordinary. So, and this is and our it, studio. Is, is that part of the house um, or separate? Um, yeah, yeah it, it probably. Yeah, the studio was an outside building. Funnily mm. enough, it survived. Yeah. yeah, very good. So, that's a piece by my brother Michael, Michael Lawler. Mm. Michael is a product designer, and he studied it in Carla, which has a very good industrial design section. And then he went to Limerick, and then the College of Art. Yes. And Michael yes. is quite witty with bits of found farm machinery. Mm. Mm. So the actually, family. the feet of this one is re are really good. It's just it's buried in the grass at the moment. I couldn't I couldn't undo it. Yeah. Yeah. To get a good photograph. Yeah. Okay. Now, th th this is interesting because it sort of combines a lot of your your menopausal uh, series. Yes. And it's uh, an exhibition that was held at the Crawford Gallery in 2018. Yes. Uh, entitled The Naked Truth. Yes. And in fact, the, the largest one there you see um, of yours made the, the cover yes. of, the, of the catalog. Yes. They were very good to me down in Cork. Yeah. Very kind. It, 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 it gives a lovely impression of the scale of your work. Yes. Uh, doesn't well, that that the painting is about eight feet high. Is it really? By, yeah. Yes. At least eight feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I mean, for, for, forgive me, Elizabeth, if, if I say to you that some, sometimes I think some of your work, uh, which is fairly explicit, um, is, yes. is reminiscent of somebody who wakes up having had a dream, yes. <laughs> immediately grabs their paints and says, well, right, I'm going to I'm going to re redo this dream from last yes. night. I, I apologize to the public. <laughs> My paintings are quite vulgar and I do apologize. I don't intend to be no, vulgar. No, I, I, I wouldn't call them vulgar. I, <laughs> no, well, they are a bit now, be frank. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I suppose um, I think life itself is a nightmare. I, I, mm. I've always felt that. And anything, you know, life is stranger than fiction, I always find. Yes. So, yes. you know, people are always talking about stress. and But I mean, without stress, we'd be nothing. It's part of our condition, you know. Mm. And you need a bit of stress to get you up out of the bed, you know. Absolutely. And there's good stress and there's bad stress. Absolutely. Mm, mm, yeah. Anyway, was that a success for you? That yes, very much so. Yes. And they treated me so very well. I, I, mm. It was wonderful. Good. Good, good. Okay. And this is Rosie, is it? Yes. I painted this in the conservatory. Yeah. And this is Rosie, who's a wonderful chef. And she was a wonderful, she's a wonderful person as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Lovely, lovely color. Yes. And the last, no, second last one, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this was painted in um, the, same the, the same dog, Lucky, on yeah. top of the um, chair with a um, homemade hobo. It's called a hobo guitar mm. and with um, an interior. This is done in Sao Paulo in the studio there. Yeah, and I can see in the background, just in the center, I'm, I'm just yes. putting my cursor around it, is, is the same... Um, same image, the Bahian, image, yeah. uh, yes, uh, sculpture, yes. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Very good. And this is the last one, Teresa. Yes, I did this when I went to City and Gills some years ago, and that's Teresa. She was the uh, receptionist, and she sat for me for a painting. Beautiful. I, I love your colors in that. Gorgeous color. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, Elizabeth, what we're going to do now is we're going to open it up to questions. Yes. And I'm just going to see on the chat um, if, if we can... Uh, it muffled. It was all about be me being muffled in the beginning, but fortunately, I think we sorted that out. Yes. Um, sound is poor. Love the book cover, says Katie. Uh, yeah, internet problems everywhere over the last while. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Elizabeth sound is perfect. That's okay. That's uh, Leslie O'Hallan, we are honoured, Elizabeth. Well, I'm honoured. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'll uh, have to send the checks out later. Oh, <laughs> please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine, hi, Elizabeth. Do you find the large works physically challenging to paint? Good question. 
I, 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 I don't remember, to be honest. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah, I, th I think physically, as in, you know, do you, do you have to stand on a chair at times if it's, um, if it's eight feet tall? Oh, yes. I know I you're a tall standing, woman. I, you're fairly I, tall I'm, yourself, aren't I, you? I, I'm standing on a chair at the moment and I have a little step ladder, so it does help. Yeah, okay. All right. I must tell you a funny story about that. Mm. Uh, 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 I met this man, um, it was at City and Gills, and I didn't know anything about his painting practice. And in the basement of Phoebe's then um, flat in London, she mm. lived over in um, the East End, they, they found all these paintbrushes, you know, and they were quite six inches wide and we were giving them out to all our friends because nobody wanted them, they were abandoned. And yes. we were given, and I insisted to, on giving this man one of the big paintbrushes. He must have thought it was sending him up because he was a miniaturist. Oh, you know, his <laughs> so the paintbrush was as wide as his painting. Yes. So he thought it was sending him up. I wasn't, I was, you know, I didn't know that he didn't paint big, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so there you are big and small i can paint any size very good okay. I, I, but in my old age i paint much more slowly now of course but mm. so therefore maybe the big painting will be more strenuous i don't know yet i'm still quite lively just about indeed you are or trained loving this alan uh breeder to everyone elizabeth i'm remembering that exhibition you had with me um th this is breeder smith Yes, Rita's great Art woman. Uh, you had with me, yeah, that John Hurt, the actor, opened for you. That's right, yes. The poet laureate John Montague read uh, a beautiful poem for you at the opening, Brida. Yes. Oh, well, that Brida, must be exciting. Say hello to Brida. And she, she's a great woman, Brida Smith. Oh, she's here. She, yeah, oh, she, she may well hello, say hello Brida. to you now yes. herself. It's great to see her, to know. She's here, yeah. She's a wonderful woman. Uh, Margaret Dunn says, love the portraits, especially the farmer. Andrew yes. Clark, is it possible to share screens so we can see better? Yeah, well, unfortunately, it's a bit late for that. Sorry. Yes. Um, such action in your painting, says Yvonne, from obviously active and lively painter. I uh, love the video, Elizabeth. Um, Yvonne says, such an artistic family. You were a very good influence, obviously. I don't know, um, maybe a bad influence. Uh, indeed. <laughs> if I produced um, a few plumbers, um, it would have been more, pre more, more, pre more practical. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. need plumbers in this family, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do, and plumbers and electricians, that's what you Correct. need. Correct. Much um, more Brida, practical. Yeah, Elizabeth, indeed. Elizabeth remembering fondly Phoebe's first solo. Yes. Solo Phoebe, show in Kilcock Art Gallery Phoebe, when she left art Phoebe school in London. had a great show with, with Brida, yes. It was really good, yes. Yeah. And El Olivia Corney says, always great to see you and your work, Elizabeth. Thanks, Olivia. Lots uh, of love to and, you too, and, Olivia. <clears throat> Yeah. And Andrew Clark, how do you keep the fresh, almost childlike expressions and colours? Do you paint fast? You just don't grow up, Andrew, tell him. You do, don't you? <laughs> I do paint fast, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I exactly, used to. Yeah. All right. Now, I've unmuted everybody, I hope. Sorry, not unmuted you, but allowed you unmute yourselves. So if anyone would like to ask a question in person to Elizabeth, please uh, just simply unmute yourself and say hello. I'm going to ask you a question. What's your favorite color? Well, that's a very good question. My little granddaughter, Flora, she loves yellow. Mm. So I think yellow, I, I, a yellow is a sign of madness, they say. But I suppose, um, I think I like all the colors because I, 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 it's like someone who's cooking. They put all the fizzing lot in, you know, they put all the yeah. herbs and spices in it. They don't want to make one herb feel less bad than the other. So they throw everything in. So, but exactly. one has to be disciplined about color as well, you know, but it's something you do organically. You don't plan yeah. it, you know. The, the other thing I'm going to ask you is, is that, and we didn't see many of them, but there are some, some of your works that show uh, skeletons. Oh yes. And I'm wondering what, 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 what is the symbolism of that? Yes, I've painted skeletons a lot. I went to, um, when I was in London and in uh, New York, I went to the museums, the museums which have skeletons, you know. And there's a wonderful museum in Glasgow called the, the um, what's it called? The, the um, Physicians uh, Museum. It's, it's all about skeletons. It's well worth visiting, you know. And um, the Surgeons Museum, I think it's in Glasgow. I recommend people see it. 
yes, and there's a wonderful museum in um, St. Petersburg. It's across the river uh, obliquely from the Hermitage. And we came across it accidentally. And it's a, an old fashioned museum and it has unusual misshapen bodies, you know, their yes. bones. And it's really exciting. I've always been fond of physiology and the drawing of things and understanding what's behind the flesh. Yes, so yes. the skeleton is something that always attracts me. I wanted to bring home the head of a, a camel once from Somalia, but it wasn't properly cured. <laughs> cured. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we, if I had had a bottle of um, bleach or something, we might have managed, but yeah, yeah. Uh, formaldehyde. Okay. Now, I'm right. just going to stop there for a second because. Can you yes, hear me? Margaret. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that the sort of movement, we've just been on a, such an exciting journey. Everything moves. It's so uh, uh, alive. And uh, uh, the colors are fantastic. Uh, and does, um, uh, uh, does one painting sort of uh, bring it on to the next idea? Do Possibly. the ideas develop sequentially from one inquiry to the next, or do you get um, suddenly a feeling when you're in a place, or oh, this uh, speaks to me? I suppose it's a mixture of all of those things. Yeah. You kind of go with the flow. Yeah. Thank oh, you just, very much yeah. for your compliment. It's, it's, a, it's been an exciting journey. I feel like I've been to one end of a new world and back again. You're very kind. Thank you. Thanks for that. Josephine Dickinson says, I would be interested to know something of your painting process, i.e. basic things such as layers, outlines, colour blocks, structures. Well, she'd have a heart attack <laughs> if she <laughs> knew my method. I could show you my mucky business on the tables. I did try to keep the place tidy and I do have cleanups, which is a, a real problem because people who are tidy all the time have this you know, I'm much better off, but I've really tried. I, I can show you with this machine, shall I? Yeah, why not? Yeah. You do. want me to see my mess, <laughs> yeah. my paintbrushes? If, if there was a society of cruelty to brushes, I would be permanently in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you, and I promise it's not, it is not, I promise you it's not an affectation because I believe that, you know, Francis Bacon's studio, yeah. I feel that we should scrap it now because it's the way he painted. Everyone has their own way. But this is my way. So shall I show you? I do. Just talk again, because I can't see you. I, I, can't, I can't speak while I'm showing it, because I have to point down the... I'm just showing you um, roughly what I have, yeah. including paints for my granddaughter. Oh, wow. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. That's an old win it's an old window pane I'm using as a, as a palette. Yeah, glass is very good. Really? It's ideal, yeah. It's quite disgusting, really. It is, yeah, but, you, but it's good. <laughs> it looks the part. It looks the part. Um, now, let me see if there's a couple of other questions here. Can uh, I ask something? Yes, of course. Yeah, hi, Tom. Uh, hi. Uh, it's just to say that uh, having seen the work here, uh, the slides are not to give it, do injustice to the colours and the vibrancy. No, they, yes. they never do, Tom. No, but it's, it, it's as though the paintings move. Yes, I apologise about that, John. Um, Tom, I Tom have, is actually a, a, a neighbour of yours. You, you might realise, but he is a neighbour. Yeah, yeah, Kenny. Tom, yeah. I would have met you years ago. Yes, I, I, I do. How, how so are you? How was, it's a long time ago, John. That's right. Yeah. Now, go, go, go back to your exhibition. We can chat again. Okay. That's <laughs> very kind of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. No, Rupert okay. says, I think the painting of the vertical horizon is one symbolising how you often break all the rules. Very brave. Congratulations. Very kind. That's Which Rupert. painting does he refer to? Which um, he's referring to... Do you know, I'm not sure. Rupert, unless you want you want to come on and explain that. Yeah, there's a, yeah. There's a painting in the snow, I think, with the chair, empty chair of a rabbit. Oh, and, yes, yes. And there's a vertical landscape on the, on the side yes. of it. I just wonder yes. how, how, how you can be um, 
I don't know how, how you uh, how, how that sort of fits all together. <laughs> just well, I just I, I, it's, it's it's so long ago. Um, is it Rupert? Your name? Rupert. Yes. Yeah. It's a long ago. I can't really remember what came first, whether I did the landscape first and then just filled in the rabbit. I can't remember. It's so long ago. It's around early 1990s when I painted the rabbit. But sometimes if if you see a board or whatever, you just leave it. Sometimes it's better to leave it than cut it up. Um. Th I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you nice. very much, Rupert. Thank you for thank you. Thanks I lot, like Rupert. the back of your hall door, by the way, Rupert. Right. <laughs> it's very neat and tidy. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks, Rupert. Okay, so Elizabeth, I think we, we might leave it there. There's one one thing I always ask uh, our guest artists, and that is, if they had the all the money in the world, uh, or indeed not, but um, could have a work of art by anybody um, in the in the world, you know, it could be a piece of sculpture, it could be a painting, it could be in a museum anywhere, um, but you'd love to hang it on your wall or, or uh, you know, display it somewhere in your garden. Um, what would it be? Well, it is a very difficult question because I have so many favourites because mm. having been in London, I used to go to the National Gallery every day, when, you know, but maybe three or four times a week. And I go in to see my friends, my friends of the paintings and sculptures. Mm. So um, I, you did ask me and I have so many wonderful, there's so many wonderful paintings I would like. There is a painting in the Tate, Tate Britain, and it's of two women. It's called the Shumley Sisters, and they're sitting in bed together with babies in their arms. And they could be twins, or they're, they mightn't be exact twins, but it's a very early painting and the artist is unknown, but it's called the Chumley Sisters or the Chumley Twins. So you could look it up, but yeah. I do like Giacometti as well, a sculpture by Giacometti, anything um, by Giacometti. Um, uh, I was just, uh, Elizabeth, I don't know if you can hear me now. Yeah, just just in here. Yeah. yeah, hi. Um, I kept getting cut off there. Um, yeah, I was just wondering because uh, you know the way you can be very precious with your work and, yes. you know, wanting it perfect and so on. And do, were you always, did you always paint that loosely, you know, uninhibited, it seems to me? Well, I don't really know where it has come from, but um, yeah. painting by its very nature is sloppy, you know, yes, really yes. sloppy and sloppy. And um, uh, I don't really know, to be quite honest, but e everyone yeah. has his own style. Actually, your name is Monks. God. We really had, he died sadly, yeah. Martin Monks was a very good artist in Carlo, Martin. Oh, in right. fact, I wanted to show one of his paintings here but I, I i didn't i did think about it so yeah. martin monks very good artist look him up oh i will indeed thanks yeah, he did and lovely really lovely. Uh, <laughs> Mark? yeah I, I mean i've done some sculpture myself but i'm i'm just loving your talk i love your attitude i, I think you're just wonderful and the idea of bringing the head back from wherever <laughs> in formaldehyde sounds amazing <laughs> yes well, well any whatever it goes but it's very oh, kind of you to send and look up uh, Martin's works because I will indeed, Elizabeth. Yeah, super. Martin, Thank you. He, he was a very good friend of ours. Okay, I will indeed, Elizabeth. Thanks so much. Love your he was work. A wonderful Thank artist. You. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Jacinta. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's two two questions I'd like to ask. Or sorry, sorry, somebody has asked. One is where can they get that lovely book of yours? Well, I suppose um, you could get it from John O'Regan. Um, the publisher down yeah. in Cork, or, or e e even Gandon, Gandon Editions. Gandon, yeah. Yes. Gandon Some Editions of the book in shops sale. in Dublin had it, but they might be out of it. You could order it from them, okay. Um, okay. or you, you could come down here when lockdown is over, and I can m maybe you can get one here from me. You know. Okay. Uh, Michelle Boyle says wonderful work. Very uh, kind. Wonderful, wonderful work. And do you stretch your own canvases? Yes, I do. do yes, oh. yes. Well, I get someone to help me now, but um, yeah. so you buy I, rolls of canvas, do you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I've done the whole process where you get rabbit skin glue, and the, the one thing you have to be really mean with this is the only tip I can give is to use the um, pre preparation, make the, the each 
layer is thin, as thin as you can be. You have to be really mean with that, otherwise the paint will flake off. The preparation right. of the um, canvas or the board has to be perfect. Right. And after that, you can do what you like. Yeah, okay. Um, somebody else asks, uh, do, 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 sorry, this was like, Morland says, do you finish one painting before starting another or how many do you work on at no. a given time? No, I don't. I, I, well, you know when a painting is finished, you get a feeling, and then you have paintings and they, they niggle at you for 15 years, so you can go back to them after that. But generally speaking, um, I would be painting a few paintings at the one time. Yes. You, yeah, yeah. And I think you, you mentioned uh, somewhere that, that you have a painting that's been going on for about 15 years. Yes, yeah. yes. It's like kind of a sore toe, you just keep going over it. <laughs> you, you know, in Father Ted, where there's a little dent in the car and you get the hammer out and the car is ruined. It's a yeah. bit like that, you know. Yes, exactly. exactly. It goes on forever. It's, it's ongoing. But I think a painting, um, it's, part, it's, a li it's a living thing. A painting is like a living person because you have to have the good, the bad and the ugly in it. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. If there's only a square inch of life in it, at least you know it's alive and you try and resuscitate it in some way. You yes, know? yes, yes. Okay. But the thing is not to be ashamed of, I mean, I had a painting hidden in a cupboard for over a year, mm -hmm. a self-portrait. It was the only one I've ever done with um, um, the um, knife, you know, the palette knife. I, yeah. I, the painting is in the book, actually. And... Um, and then I, I, I took it out then after a year and a half. And, you know, it's just, it's all vanity. Whichever you do is vanity, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, It's yes. vanity driven, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, anybody else uh, like to ask a question before we wrap up? Oh, I forgot to say one thing. Um, sure. I have two paintings here that I did on a Zoom on the news. The Yemeni babies are starving. We've got oh, yes. to do something about that. Yeah. And... Um, in fact, yes. that, that's, yeah, there's more about that on your website. Yes, yes. Those Which, paintings are, uh, some of them are for sale yeah, still. Yeah. So, and 50% goes to the Trokera. Right. Okay. So but if that, anyone that, is interested, um, it would be a great honor to. Yeah. So all they have to do is go on to elizabethcope.com. Website. And, and your website, and they will yes. see a, a link to that. Yes. Uh, all the work you've done. Yes. Um, and you're, you're welcome to give any of your friends my phone number if they need it. Sure thing. Yeah, You're okay. very welcome. You're very good. Thank Tr you. Trokra are a great organization. Maliki. Maliki says, wonderful to meet you, Elizabeth. An honor and a pleasure. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Maliki. Alan, I just want to yeah. ask something uh, yes. quite irrelevant to the painting. Sure. Uh, uh, we share a friend, Elizabeth and I, called uh, Florence de Saboulin. And I'd love to be able to uh, forward this program to her, but I don't oh, quite know Oh, from Provence. How well, wonderful. Florence, yeah. yes. All right, well, uh, I tried her um, uh, email yesterday mm -hmm. to give her the uh, click, but I, I think I have the wrong email. Yeah. Well, thank but you so much. Florence was very good. She had a, re a gallery. Yes, yeah. so she had uh, a very successful gallery. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice, Margaret. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but now, Margaret, if if uh, you have her email, can you send the program on? To yes, her? indeed. In I, yeah. En Provence. Yes, I will try and find her address, Margaret. Yes, she what, that. I have you, her address, but I don't yes. have her email. Well, will you give your will you give that to Alan for me, uh, Margaret? Yeah. Yes, and I will. Yeah. That's very yes. kind of you. She was a wonderful woman, and she was beginning to do very well just when she oh, left. Oh, exactly. It was a tragedy. Which is so yeah, sad. Yeah. yeah. But I, sad. yeah, I keep in touch with her. And so well, does that's John Behan. That's good. That's yeah, very yeah. good. She loves you dearly. <laughs> yes, but we too. And she stayed here with us and we had great times together. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. she actually was very helpful to me at the time because I I wasn't, I had a tumour and she was very kind, oh. I remember. And you, you, I didn't, I, I'd never forget that, you know. She had a very, very good uh, group of people throwing their paintings. When That's she good. Had like that. yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you Margaret, very much. thanks for that. And uh, we'll, we'll send that link to you one way or another, if you can contact Thank me. Thank you so much, Alan. Not at all, you're welcome. Um, Eileen McDermott Rose says, congrats, Elizabeth. Um, oops, sorry, it's jumped. Wonderful to see such amazing art. Thank you so much. Um, David Goldberg said, would love to say hello, Elizabeth, but I am muted. Um, hopefully you and Jeffrey are well. <laughs> so very well, thanks, David. Well. Yeah, you obviously know each other. 
Yes. And uh, Brida. David says, is a good friend. Yeah, very good. Okay, unless anybody else wants to come in there. David, I'm sorry you can't unmute themselves. I, I, I've allowed it to happen. So um, unfortunately, it, it's not happening for you. Um, is there anybody else before we finish? Um, Elizabeth, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for everything you've done. You put a massive amount of effort into this. Um, and uh, thank you, Jeffrey, also for keeping her on the straight and narrow for me. <laughs> That she didn't run away this morning or something like that. <laughs> thank you, um, Alan, for being so kind. You made it so easy, you know. Oh, well, really thank you. Thank you. And thank you, you for have... your lovely book. It's absolutely, it's, it'll take pride, pride to place on my bookshelf, it's, I can tell you. It's very kind. You can, you can use it for throwing wood into the fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> anyway, listen, thank you so much. Um, thank you very and, much, Alan. Yeah, and listen, everybody who's watching this, if you're watching it on YouTube, um, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it gives us a bit of street cred, which we all could do with. Um, and, uh, you know, please keep, keep following us. Um, next week, we have another artist. Um, this artist is, he was, prof was professor, he's retired now. He was professor of painting for many years in a university somewhere in Europe. And that's all I'm telling you. <laughs> all will be revealed on next Wednesday. So I hope you'll tune in again next Saturday, usual time, 10 o'clock on the art as well. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate you giving your time on a Saturday morning to watch this and I hope you enjoyed it. So take thank care. Thank you very everyone. much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank, thank you. you.